The Spirit of the Lord is in his holy temple. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is ours forever. Let us stand and worship our marvelous God. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we worship you. You presented us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He dwells within us as a companion, teacher, and guide. He strengthens us when we are weak. He comforts us when we mourn. He gives us the opportunity to use our talents for your glory. The Holy Spirit fills us with your love, generosity, and mercy. With the Holy Spirit beside us, we can walk confidently into this world as your hands and feet. With the Holy Spirit as our advocate, we will not fear anything that rises against us. Amen. join me now in the prayer of confession saying God the Spirit you give us wisdom faith prophecy healing touch and power you call us and equip us one by one to serve yet we sometimes scorn your gifts and question how to use them forgive us quicken our hearts Keep us humble, alert, open, and willing. 
guide us to use your gifts to serve and glorify you. Amen. And now, friends, let us offer our silent and personal confessions to the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there is good news. Because of the perfect love of Jesus, all our sins are forgiven. They are washed clean. The debt is paid. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome, friends. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit fill you with peace and confidence today. If you are watching at home, please leave us a comment. If you are here in person, please wave to your brothers and sisters here in the sanctuary. You may be seated for the announcements and the message. And before we roll the announcements, I would ask you to look in the handout you received. Grab that connection card, if you will. You can use a pen that's in front of you to print your name, email address, any other information you'd like to share. I'd encourage those watching at home to do as well. We have a digital version of the connection card. And also in the handout you received is this information about next Sunday when we have the church has left the building. We're going to gather here at 9 a.m. for a quick prayer and go out and serve. Some projects are in the building, some are outside. We have something for everyone and all ages. And I'll be sharing a little bit more about that in a minute. Here are the rest of our announcements for today. Have you signed up for a Church Has Left the Building project yet? It's coming up on June 5th, the day we head out to be the hands and feet of Jesus and work on various mission projects throughout the community instead of coming to services in the morning. Then in the evening, we'll gather back together for pizza at 5.30, followed by worship at 6 p.m. Look for the sign-up sheet and pick your project today. Also in conjunction with The Church Has Left the Building, we are collecting new or gently used books for cops and kids of Delaware Valley, an organization dedicated to getting free books into the hands and homes of children. Donate books now through June 5th for kids ages infant through 12 years old. Look for the collection bin in the lobby. The way is for those who are new to Woodside or who want to renew their relationship with Jesus. This four-week dinner and discussion group will help you make friends and start or restart your journey with Jesus. The Way will meet weekly on Tuesdays beginning June 7th at 6.30 p.m. Indicate your interest on the connection card. Graduating senior high students will be honored on Sunday, June 12th with the Senior High Sunday Barbecue and Service. The picnic begins at 5 p.m., followed by higher ground at 6 p.m. Main dishes and drinks are provided. Bring a side dish or dessert to share. RSVP on the connection card. It's time to register your kids for VBS and or Push the Rock Sports Camp scheduled for this July. Find all the registration information on the Woodside website under Kids and Youth. Woodside Christian Preschool is hiring. Would you like to work part-time in a caring Christian environment? Woodside Christian Preschool is looking for an office assistant to join their team. For information or to apply, contact Preschool Director Sherry Wolf in the Preschool Office. Those are today's announcements. Be sure to check your email, the app, the website, and follow Woodside on social media to stay up to date with all that's happening. If you filled out a paper connection card, you can drop that along with your offering envelope in the basket when it's passed during the final song. Now. Let's continue worshiping God.
men was walking through the aisles of the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show when he spotted a blue-violet stone the size and shape of a potato. He asked the seller, you want $15 for this? The seller looked at the stone and thought it didn't look as pretty as some of the other stones in the bin. He said, oh, all right, give, it, give me $10 for it. The guy who bought it was a gem expert. He could see that, in fact, it was a star sapphire. And when polished and evaluated, was worth far more than 10 bucks. It was worth thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of dollars. It took a lover of stones to see the pricelessness of that gem. It takes the lover of your soul to see and bring out the gem that is in you. You see, you, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if he's your Lord and Savior, you've already received an incredibly priceless gift, an abundant relationship with God, an eternal life with God. All the diamonds and rubies and sapphires here on earth could not buy this gift for you, and yet it is freely offered by Jesus through his death, through his resurrection. He offers you this incredibly priceless gift, abundant life, eternal life. But our gift-giving God doesn't stop there. No, as you follow him, he fills you with gifts of the Holy Spirit. In our series on the Holy Spirit, we we'll come now to see that God puts presence inside each one of us, not just his presence. And those gifts, Scripture tells us, are for every disciple of Christ. Every one of them receives spiritual gifts from the Lord. It's mentioned in all these different passages in the New Testament. When do these gifts come in you? They come in when the Holy Spirit comes in, when you receive Jesus through the Holy Spirit. How many gifts do you receive? Maybe one, maybe more. We don't know. But what's the purpose of these gifts? The purpose of these gifts is that they are tools to build up the body of Christ and accomplish God's mission in the world. That's why he gives them to us. He gives us these gifts so that we can love God, grow in grace, and share with others. These are the priceless gems he's placed in each one of us. And what is the purpose of them? You'll only really understand your purpose when you understand the kind of person you are. A lot of people say, what's my purpose in life? Why on earth am I here? Well, when you know what God made you to be, it'll determine what he intends you to do. This is the secret of knowing God's will for your Life. When you discover your spiritual gifts, how God made you, and what he's calling you to do, you'll say, oh, this is what I was made for. This is why I'm here. When you use your gifts, you'll find great joy. You'll say, this is what I've been waiting for. But the surprising and tragic news is that many people never find the gem within them. They never find out what their spiritual gifts, or if they know about it, they think, ah, oh, it's not worth much more than 10 bucks. You see, the reason for this is that there are a lot of myths about the gifts. Here's the first myth, that only pastors have gifts for ministry. Here's the truth. Every believer has gifts for ministry. Every single believer has gifts from the Holy Spirit for ministry. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, now to each one, each one, the manifestation of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit is given for the common good. Even if you did not go to seminary, you are a minister. You have a ministry. God's given you gifts for ministry, and he wants you to discover them and use them. Everyone here is a gifted minister of God. Here's the second myth, that some gifts are more important than others. Here's the truth. All gifts are equally important. They're all equally important to God. Again, in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul writes, In fact, God has placed the parts in the body, that's the church, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, 
those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, definitely needed. Some people have the wrong impression that the visible gifts in the church, the pastor, the worship leader, the choir members, the people out in front, the elders, the deacons are the most important gifts, and the other ones behind the scene, the greeter, the person that works in the kitchen, the helper, the People on behind the scenes, they're less important, but that's not true. Do you want to know who the really powerful people are in the church? It's the sound tech booth up behind the scenes. Let's hear it for all of them. Why are they so important? Because they can shut me off. Last week, I had COVID, and so we recorded the sermon in advance and showed you a video of me. But somehow it didn't work, and so you didn't get to see the video. You got to go back and experience old-time radio and listen to the message. That was still better than what happened in the vineyard, because in there, they saw the video. Unfortunately, my mouth didn't match the sound. It was like watching a Godzilla movie or Bruce Lee. Thank God for the sound people that figured it out and made it work. Every single gift is important. You can see my hands and my feet. You can't see my liver and my heart, but I wouldn't want to live without any of them. Every gift is important in the body of Christ. Third thing, I use my gifts on my own. The truth is we can't use them on our own. We need each other. Each gift depends on all the others. We need one another. There should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Church is not a club. It's not an institution. It's not an organization. The church is an organism. It's a living, breathing, growing body, the body of Christ. Now, a club can work if only 10 to 40 percent of its members show up and do things, but your body cannot work if 60 to 90 percent of it is inactive. We need every part to do its part. And we're all interconnected, and we build one another up. This is why we need every single person to be part and find out what their gift is. We don't want to see anyone sit on the sidelines, anyone get burned out, anyone left behind. And here's the last one. Some gifts are miraculous, others are mundane. But the truth is, all the gifts are miraculous. They all come supernaturally from the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul mentions some gifts that sound very supernatural. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues. Those all sound really miraculous. But then in Romans 12, he mentions gifts that sound kind of mundane. Serving, teaching, encouraging, contributing, governing, showing mercy. Some people really are fascinated with the miraculous ones, seemingly miraculous, and other people are afraid of them, and they prefer the quieter ones. Pentecostal charismatic churches, they love the ones that seem really miraculous, but we Presbyterians being frozen chosen, we like the quieter ones. We're afraid of the ones that seem kind of showy. Here's the truth. They all come from the Spirit. They're all supernatural. We need them all. He says all of these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them, gives them to each one just as he determines. We need them all. And so if your gift is seemingly miraculous, like tongues or healing or prophecy, don't hide it. Let's use them all for God's glory. You see, what God wants to do, what the Holy Trinity wants to do, is bring out the gem in you, the gem that's in you. Look at this passage. There are different kinds of gifts, but it's the same Holy Spirit who distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but it's the same Lord Jesus. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God the Father at work. We see all three parts of the, Holy, of the Trinity there. 
But here's the first one, the gift. There are different types of gifts, but it's the same spirit that gives them out. God's given to every one of you a gift. You say, how do I know what my gift is? We have a simple, a free, and easy way to figure this out. It's called GPS. GPS. It's available on our website. You can go there, and if you started already, you can continue. If you haven't done it, you can get started. Go to the website. Look at the bottom. You see the red circle there. That's where you would start it. Click on that. But if you've already started and you haven't finished, you can click on the one continue GPS. Put in your information and get back to it again. Now, GPS, like on your phone, uses all these satellites to direct you from where you are to where you're going. Spiritual GPS uses three coordinates, your gifts, your passions, your story. Taken together, these three will give your unique calling from God. And so this GPS, it asks you some questions. The first bunch of questions look at your natural and spiritual gifts. It'll help you see them and show you what the top ones are, your top two or three. Doesn't stop there. It asks your passions. What do you care about? What are the causes that matter to you? Who are the people you like to work with? Children, teens, youth, adults. Maybe you want to work with people who are homeless or in prison, people in recovery, any different types of groups of people. And what's your leadership style? Are you an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a shepherd, or teacher? These questions will ask that. Now, a lot of people stopped here and they didn't go to the last part, which was the crucial part your story. What troubles and triumphs? What blessed moments and broken moments has God used to shape you into who you are? People will have your gifts, people will have your passions, but nobody has your story. And God has shaped you into the unique person you are. So if you didn't get to this last part, and this regard a little bit of thinking, answer these questions. Even if you just put one sentence in these last six questions, they will help you see the unique person you are and what God wants you to do. Here is a QR code. If you've got a phone handy, take a picture of it. Because if you do, then it'll lead you right to the survey. You can ask those questions this weekend, answer them, and find out where God wants you to serve. Why is this essential? Because when you use your gifts, then God gives you energy to do that. There are different kinds of working, but, it's all in, but in all of them and in every one, it's the same God at work. You see, the word working is energamata. Where you have that word means energy. God gives you the energy to use your gift. A lot of people get burned out because they're not drawing on God's power, on God's energy to use their gift. So here's what you do. Talk to God in prayer. Say, God, I'm feeling worn out, burned out. How can I receive your power? Take time out from your ministry. You occasionally need to do that to take a little bit of a Sabbath. But most importantly, get a Timothy. Get someone to work with you so you're not doing this alone. We don't need supermen and wonder women. What we need is teams, and teams need Timothys. So ask someone to work with you to do God's work. And last one, ministry. There are different kinds of service, but it's the same Lord. The word service means diakonion, which means deacon or minister. Your ministry is the place where you use your GPS. Your ministry might be right here in these walls. But it may be out there and where you work, where you go to school. It might be out in a prison, in a homeless camp, in a nursing home. God might be calling you to serve in one of those places too. He wants us to go out and do his will. And so I would ask you to think about where is God calling you to be? Ask God to open doors for you. Ask yourself, what gives me joy? Where do I find excitement and energy? Take GPS and talk with me. Talk with staff leaders. Talk with people at church who do different ministries. And try some stuff. And then stick with what works. All three things are important. If you've got a gift in a ministry but no energy, you're not going to be going anywhere. If you've got ministry and energy but you're not serving your gift, you're going to feel frustrated. If you've got a gift in your energy but you're not in your ministry, you're going to say, what am I supposed to do? And when you get all three together, that's when your gem truly shines. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that next weekend. Would you pull out this insert in the handout you received, the one that says the church has left the building. On Pentecost, which is what is next weekend we're going to celebrate, God, through the Holy Spirit, drove the people out into the world to do God's work. Next Sunday, we're going to go out into the world to do God's work, to celebrate Pentecost. 
Now, there are projects listed on the back of this, and there's something for everybody, every age, every time commitment. You say to me, well, I don't have time on Sunday. We've got projects on Saturday. You can go help do yard work for somebody in our church who just got out of the hospital. You can go work at Restore, and the money that they make at Restore goes to build Habitat for Humanity houses. You can make that possible. You say, well, I only have time on Sunday morning. You can come here on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. We're going to have a prayer time, and then you can go into the vineyard and work on a project. We have family-friendly projects. We have projects for all different ages in there. You can make meals for hungry people. You can do crafts for Operation Christmas Child. You say, well, I want to go out and make a difference. We've got projects for you. You can go out and help people clean the streets here through Adopt a Highway. You can go out and help lead a worship service along with Sudeep. They're going to go to a local nursing home. You can go and collect books that go to children in the Morrisville School District so they'll have something to read. During this summer, you can distribute flyers and invite people to church at Parkland Church. You can help raise crops at the Garden of Hope and Snipes Farm that go to fill pantries of hungry people in our area. You can work with the cleaning up the ball fields right down the street that are named in memory of one of our church members, Greg Kyola. And you can join me. I'm going to go out and paint a room at Urban Promise Trenton and help that place which gives hope and a future to urban children. And you can be part of that. Join me as we go and do that project. We're going to do it on Sunday. And then in the evening, we're going to come back. We'll feed you, as Presbyterians always eat. And after eating, we're going to worship and praise God for all the work that he did through all of you during that weekend. Let's get together and celebrate how God wants to work through us. Don't just talk about church. Don't just go to church. Friends, let's be the church and let God's gem shine. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, thank you for loving each one of us so much that you placed your gem in us. Lord, use us in miraculous ways to share the incredible good news of life and hope and peace. Lord, let us clear some time so that we can commit to using the gifts you've given to us with the energy you've provided for us in the ministry you've created for us. And then we'll be able to say, Lord, ah, this is why I'm here. This is my purpose. Lord, help us to know this is why you placed us here on earth. We pray this in your strong name, Jesus. Amen.
come together today brokenhearted by the devastating deaths of students and teachers in Texas. It is beyond our imagining that this type of tragedy has occurred again. We pray for the families, the community, and our country. We ask for your guidance in finding peace, reassurance, and solutions that will prevent this from happening again. On this weekend of Memorial Day, we honor those who have given their lives to protect others, protect our country, and protect our freedom. Help us to find ways to change this broken world so that no one else will need to make that ultimate sacrifice again. In our community here at Woodside, we remember the loved ones we have lost. We pray for healing for those who are afflicted with disease and injury. We lift up those who are entangled in the web of addiction or the confusion of mental illness. Open our eyes and ears to see and hear the needs of our neighbors, friends, and family members. Equip us to become stronger advocates, more compassionate caregivers, and better listeners. Fill us with the fire of your holy love that we might pass that love on to all those we meet. We pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand now as one people united by the Holy Spirit to sing our final hymn. You may place your connection cards and offerings in the basket. <laughs> 